Okay, guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to the European Astronaut Center. My name is Jules. We met before, most of you. And uh, welcome to the first in-flight call to the first on-orbit press conference of Timothy Peake on the space station. We are currently working with our colleagues of uh, NASA in Houston and uh, Europe in Columbus Control Center, also with Heinz, who is over there on the balcony, uh, trying to prep the video and audio on the station to talk to us in a second. We'll uh, go live at 3.15. And I'm just doing a voice check now for this. So this is a one, two, voice check, one, two, voice check, since we're trying to fix the audio. So that's the quality of sound that uh, we should send to the station to see if they can hear us. It's quite a difficult process. As you can imagine, the station is orbiting the Earth with a speed of 27,000 kilometers an hour. That's about 17,500 miles an hour, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I'm asking Heinz if the sound check is OK. Heinz, are we good with the sound check? Right. <laughs> it okay, should be OK. Okay, so at the moment, we, it seems that we have the video link from the station, but they are working on the sound. So to be completely transparent right now, we don't have the audio from the station. Our colleagues are working on this, but we're still on time to go at uh, 3.15 to speak to ESA astronaut Timothy Peake on board the space station. He will be inside of the European laboratory of the space station called Columbus, as you all know, and um, will be with us for 20 minutes. Re replying to your questions, probably about his first impressions of the station. He's docked and uh, ingressed the space station on the 15th with his uh, colleagues from NASA, Team Corpora, and from Roscosmos, Yuri Malenchenko, who was the commander of the Soyuz spacecraft, who docked to the space station manually on the 15th of December, after the launch six hours before from the spaceport in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. All right, so like I said, <laughs> we're still working on the sound here, and I have no positive uh, confirmation that we have the sound. So that's the kind of thing that can happen if you're trying to do things that are a bit more complicated than your usual uh, job. So we'll just uh, continue working on it and let the, the colleagues work on that. Like I said, we're still online for a call to the station at 3.15. And keep our fingers crossed. So we're still standing by here at the Astronaut Center for our colleagues to tell us if we can receive the sound from the station. So we can proceed to the press Station conference. copies, I'm ready. And uh, this was a uh, British accent that I heard. Uh, let's hope this was uh, Tim. But uh, OK, I'm still crossing fingers and waiting for the call from NASA uh, Houston, the famous Houston, we have a problem center. This is uh, them who send the, the signal to us so we can proceed with our press conference. And I'm pending now their call to call the station.
I'm ready for the event. So I hear they're still uh, fixing the issues. So let's uh, keep our fingers crossed that uh, Tim can s speak to us and that we can see him. European Space Agency. Hello, Jules. Uh, this is Tim on board the International Space Station. I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Tim, we can hear you loud and clear. Great to see you. Yes. Tim, it's great to see you in the uh, Columbus Laboratory. We have a uh, lot of uh, journalists here at the European Astronaut Center who are eager to uh, ask their questions. So I'll just uh, go ahead for the first question. Hi, Tim. It's Fred Dynage from ITV Meridian. Great to see you again. When we spoke here in Cologne five years ago, you described how you felt life on the International Space Station would be. Is it as you imagined? Is it better? Is it worse? Is it heaven or is it hell? It's way better than I imagined. It is actually really hard to describe. Um, I mean, just the, the whole ride into space on the Soyuz rocket, what a phenomenal machine, so powerful, such a smooth launch, and then arrival on board the International Space Station and adapting to this weightless environment and being able to go to the cupola and look at that amazing view of planet Earth, it's, it's way beyond my expectations. Tim, it's David Shookman from BBC News. My question is this, how are you adapting to life on board, being weightless? And in particular, a lot of new astronauts have reported feeling a bit sick. Have you felt sick at all? Hello, David. Well, the first 24 hours is pretty rough. Every time you turn a corner or move your head, looking up and down, left and right, your ears, your vestibular system is sending signals to the brain um, that don't, doesn't really match your eyes. And so your brain's trying to work out the two differences. And so you do feel disorientated and dizzy. But I've been amazed at how quickly the body has adapted. On my second morning, I woke up feeling fresh, ready to go to work, and have had no problems since. Hi Tim, Tom Cheshire from Sky News. Um, everyone is incredibly proud of your achievement getting to the ISS as the first British astronaut there. Now you're up there, does all that flag waving seem slightly parochial and small? I feel a little bit isolated from everything, to be quite honest with you, from my two weeks in quarantine, just focusing on the mission that's ahead, and now being up on board the space station. We, we have launched straight into a very busy program, but you know, I, I'm really keen to keep in touch with people back on Earth, and uh, once I get my space legs and we settle down a bit, I'll be able to share this mission as much as possible. So now I, I'm really delighted and thrilled at the phenomenal support, not just in the UK, but across Europe as well. Um, it's obviously a, a great event when we have a European astronaut on board the space station. So I'm, I'm really happy to continue that good work and uh, continue sharing this mission with everybody back home. Hello, Tim. This is Alok Jha from ITV News. Um, you've trained for years to get up on board the space station. But can you tell me what's been the most surprising, the most unexpected thing when you actually got there? Uh, that's a great question. The most unexpected thing, I think, was 
um, the blackness of space because we always talk about seeing the view of planet Earth and how beautiful it is, and so you you come to expect that. But what people don't mention that much is just when you look the opposite direction. Uh, and you see how dark space is. I mean, it's the black is black, and you realize just how small the Earth is in that blackness. And that was a real surprise to me. Hi, Tim. This is Kate from BBC's PM program. We've got a couple of questions from two six-year-olds from Scarvo Infant School in Grimsby, Matthew and Ali. They want to know how you have a shower. Hi, Kate. That's a great question. Um, we're showering with just wet flannels. That we heat them up uh, by, uh, we've got a portable water dispenser. We can put some hot water in that soapy flannel, and then we basically have a body wash. It's a little bit like camping for six months. Um, you keep yourself clean as best you can. We've got special shampoo called No Rinse Shampoo, so we can wash our hair without having to rinse it out with water. Um, and that's basically how we keep clean. Hi Tim, this is uh, Rob Olver from British Forces Broadcasting Service, BFBS, and Forces TV. On Christmas Day, you'll obviously be thinking of uh, family and friends. Will you also spare a thought for all those British personnel far from home at Christmas and scattered across a planet that you've got a pretty amazing view of at the moment? That's right. I'm, you know, very in a very privileged position. And although I'll be missing friends and family on Christmas Day, I'll uh, at least be able to uh, orbit the Earth 16 times and be able to look down upon the whole planet. And also, of course, we have great communications up here on the space station, so I'll be able to call my my family at home. And uh, I do, of course, wish everybody who's deployed on operations all the very best of luck and a happy Christmas and a happy New Year. Hi Tim, this is Thurston Poppy from Deutschland Radio Kultur, a German radio broadcast. You hear it, I'm the German crowd in this exclusive route. I uh, like to know from my audience, how does it feel to train at zero gravity? To do sports? Uh, the feeling of zero gravity is a bit like the first time I put on a, a pair of skis and tried to go skiing. It does take a while to become proficient. Um, and it also takes a while to get orientated because uh, quite often you'll be working in the roof and you'll suddenly just lose which, your sense of direction. Um, but again, I, it's amazing how quickly your, your brain really adapts to that. Um, and I think within about another week, I'll be extremely comfortable working in this environment. Tim, it's Fred Dynage again from ITV Meridian. How? You made my year when you told me that uh, the inspiration for your interest in science was watching the children's program How many years ago. Can I ask you, will you do a How for me? And will you tell me if you're still in love with science? Hello, Fred. Yes, of course, I'm still in love with science. Um, science is what got me up here, and science is what's going to bring me back home safely. So uh, definitely. And uh, yeah, uh, great wishes, and, and hello to everybody who watches How. Tim, David Shuckman, BBC News again. We're all getting lots of questions for you on social media. And a couple here are, how easily does water boil in space? And does the tea taste different up there? Well, the second part of your question is the far most important, so I'll answer that first. <laughs> the, uh, the tea actually tastes surprisingly good. Um, I was really delighted. Um, so uh, I have my tea and my method of using a kind of teapot and decanting it from one pouch to another is working really well. So uh, yes, I'm enjoying my tea up here. Um, and as regards to water, we, we don't boil water for any of our cooking. The, the water dispenser is only hot. It's about 87 degrees Celsius. But but we're in the same atmosphere here that you are back on Earth, the same pressure, same temperature, about the same humidity. The only thing that's different up here is we have about 10 times the level of carbon dioxide. Um, but So water will boil at 100 degrees up here, no different to back on planet Earth. 
Hi, Tim. Tom Cheshire from Sky News again. Um, you're looking fairly comfortable in zero gravity. Just wondering whether you had mastered the zero gravity somersault, and if so, whether you'd give us a twirl. Uh, I definitely haven't mastered it. I'll give you a trial and I'll show you just how bad it is. That was great. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me another week. Tim, we watched you say goodbye to your wife and your two little boys. This Christmas Day, what will you be doing and what will you be thinking about? Well, Christmas Day is always a time to kind of reflect on uh, friends and family in the future. Um, up here, obviously, we have a very important job to do, and uh, we'll be working, I suspect, for some of that time as well. But I'll definitely be taking time out to call friends and family, and what a wonderfully unique place to call people from on Christmas Day. It's going to be absolutely fantastic to be able to call friends and family from up here, and also, of course, to have some time to take some pictures of our beautiful planet. Tim, it's Alok Jha from ITV News again. I've got a question from an ITV News viewer. They want to know, what does it smell like on the International Space Station? That's a great question and, um, you know, I was very conscious of that when I first came on board because so many people had asked me. And I can only say it's certainly not unpleasant, that's, that's one thing, and it's kind of a metallic smell, um, almost, almost chemically, but not strong in any way, not bad in any way. I would say it was more of a metallic smell, quite distinctive. Hi Tim, it's uh, Rob Oliver from BFBS and Forces TV again. Um, we've heard there's a, a Christmas pudding up there where no Christmas pudding uh, has gone before. Apart from eating Christmas pudding in strange places, is there any other way that uh, this compares to a military tour of duty? Well, I think the uh, kind of isolation from uh, family and friends is, is fairly similar. And also, the, the length of time that you're away, you just have to get into that mental mindset, both you and your family back home, that you're not going to see each other for a, a long time. Um, and I think once you've achieved that, then it's a case of just focusing on the mission ahead and looking forward to when you'll be reunited with your family. Tim, the German again, hi. How do you motivate yourself to do sports each day for two hours at ISS? Well, our first sports session actually for both myself and Tim Coper is going to be this afternoon. Um, we have three main exercise devices, a bike machine, a running machine, and a weightlifting machine that uses vacuum cylinders to give the resistance so that we can exercise our muscles. Um, and really, I think, is, is great motivation because working out up here is a chance to listen to some music, to really you know, get some good exercise. And, and you feel like you want to exercise because you're spending all this time just floating your muscles are completely relaxed, you do feel like you want to actually get onto a bike or a running machine and do some work. Tim, Fred Dynage from ITV Meridian yet again. Tim, tell us about the challenges that face you in the coming weeks and months, the things you have to do, the things you're looking forward to, the things you're dreading. Well, firstly, Fred, there's absolutely nothing I'm dreading. Uh, life up here is absolutely spectacular. Um, there are certainly some challenges ahead. We've got a very busy schedule, both with the science program, the visiting vehicles as well. We currently have a Cygnus vehicle docked, which we're unpacking. That's taking a lot of time to unpack that. Um, preparations for potential spacewalks, EVA, are ongoing. Um, and of course, with a, with a future SpaceX vehicle that comes up, there'll be even more science on board that too. So uh, plenty of work to do over the next six months. Tim, David Shukman, you've had some messages from some very interesting people, uh, Her Majesty the Queen and also Elton John. Uh, what was your reaction to that?
It was absolutely astounding. Um, and again, as I said, I kind of felt a bit isolated. So I was catching up with all of this once I got on board the station and people were telling me, hey, did you realize you had a tweet from uh, Her Majesty, etc." So uh, I was absolutely blown away. It's, uh, it's a huge honor, obviously, to, uh, to receive that. And um, I'm just so glad that so many people across the UK have been enthused by this mission. And um, certainly, I'm so glad that so many of the uh, children have enjoyed it. And I saw those wonderful pictures from the Science Museum in London, and I just thought that was incredible, absolutely spectacular and phenomenal support. And, uh, you know, I would like to say a huge thank you, of course, to everybody who has supported me throughout this mission. Hi, Tim. Tom Cheshire from Sky News. Um, sleeping is, presents its difficulties. Astronauts get woken up by cosmic rays on their retina. Um, have you been bedding in in that respect? I think I've been fairly fortunate. Um, I'm enjoying sleeping. Uh, I haven't actually tied my sleeping bag down at all. I actually quite enjoy just floating around the, uh, the crew quarter. You're not going to go anywhere. It's very small. So you might occasionally bounce off a wall, but it's a very gentle nudge. Um, and uh, I have seen one uh, flash on the retina on my first night. Tim, it's Alok Jha from ITV News again. Um, you told me when we met in Star City a few weeks ago that you wanted to see the new Star Wars movie. Have you seen it yet? Or if you're not, when will you? No, we haven't seen it yet. Um, we're very excited about the Star Wars movie. I think we're all fans up here. And I believe that on the 21st, we uh, may get to see that up here on the space station. So a little bit later than everybody else. But hey, what a spectacular place to watch Star Wars. <laughs> Tim, are you still looking forward to doing a spacewalk now that you're up there in space? More so than ever, um, when I went to the cupola yesterday and uh, I watched a, both a sunset and a sunrise at different times and looking outside of the space station is incredible and to think that you might actually be out there on a spacewalk when that happens is going to be the, the most incredible sensation ever. Tim, Rob Olver, BFBS Forces TV again. Do you have any uh, special message for your former Army Air colleagues at Middle Wallop? I would like to say a huge thank you to everybody uh, at the Army Air Corps and Middle Wallet. There was both a launch party celebration going on and also I received a fantastic good luck message. So uh, really just to say thank you to everybody who has supported me. And again, I look forward to sharing this mission when I get back as much as I can with you. Tim, Fred Dynage for the last time. Amazing scenes, particularly in West Sussex at the launch. Great scenes at your old schools. Any Christmas message for all your many admirers in West Sussex, indeed, right across the South, right across the UK? Well, Fred, you know, in about an hour and a half, uh, we've got the most wonderful pass right over the South of England. So um, I will be sending lots of good Christmas messages, good luck, and uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Again, thank you very much for enjoying the launch and supporting this mission, and have a great Christmas and a great New Year to everybody back home. Tim, first and pop again, Deutschland Radio Kultur. Is you serious to run the London Marathon in space? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I think my first time on the treadmill is going to be over the weekend, and uh, so that will introduce me to my harness, but I've got until April to, uh, to get used to the system and to get uh, enough miles up so I'm ready for my marathon event, but I'm really looking forward to running the London Marathon definitely next year. Tim, this is Jules again. It was great talking to you. Everyone at ESC is delighted, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Jules. Great talking to you. And I'd like to say thank you to everybody there at EAC as well. And uh, thank you for all your help and support in getting me on board the International Space Station. I really do appreciate it. And have a great afternoon there at EAC.
Bye-bye. Bye, Tim. Keep up the good work.